Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. You're actually attending the Church of Flaming Freedom this morning because it is Sunday. I'm glad you didn't say the Church of Satan. That makes me happy. Yeah, we'd have problems uh, well, with that. Well, I yeah, was going yeah. to point out that we have a we Christian and a Satanist here. So we've covered most of the bases. And, you and you're me. non-denominational, right? I'm not oh, really. Well, yeah, very uh, non-denominational. Me saying I'm a Satanist is actually, uh, uh, it's a stretch. Well, you're, you're a non-denominational Satanist. A non-denominational. No, actually, I'm, I'm or, uh, are you a Le- the LeVayan. Oh, okay. Le- 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 specifically right. LeVayan. All right. All right. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone. And uh, some of you are listening to us via the downloaded podcast. Next week, I would encourage you to tune in via Ustream or the Liberty Radio Network. So you can listen to us live and you can call in via Skype at In Your Head Shows. We are expecting a caller today, actually. Uh, I've asked him if he wants to give us, maybe call us right during the second segment. And he's going to debate me about gay marriage and whether or not it's a horrible uh, conspiracy, uh, a conspiracy thing from the, the, the ultra right wing or the conservative party. What? Not the conservative party. This is not. Huh. Written, what would he say that they're conspiring about? I'm, I'm really curious. We're going to find out. I'm excited. He sent me an article. I didn't quite get a chance to read it all. I just got it this morning. But uh, but uh, anyway, Alan is going to call in and, and debate me and tell me why it's the worst thing ever. Literally ever the worst thing ever is, is government recognizing gay marriages. So we're going to be prepared for that. Interesting. That so, should be interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, other than that... <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on for today. Um, why is this not yeah, updated? There is quite a bit going on. It's cached. Okay. We've Father's got Day. Lelania here. Hello. And Lauren, of course, as usual. Hello. Got the urban word of the day, deep fave. I think you came up with that, didn't you? No, no. No, I didn't. I think that's mine. No. Um, happy Father's Day. I have a derp to correct from last episode and to apologize for. I'll do that. You make mistakes. I do make mistakes. And this is one that I caught myself for the most part. The co-host also kind of corrected me at the time. And I just want to remind everyone that we will be at Flaming Freedom Live at Pork Fest. And I'm going to say something about that right now because I've been posting pictures every day to the event page on Facebook. Apparently, I am just full retard on social media. Never go full retard. But... <laughs> I've been posting every day, invite your friends with these cute little pictures of, like, people at parties, you know. Cute little invite pictures. Invite your friends. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Na- naked men, midgets in, like, bondage Hey, gear. midgets make every party I showed better. my dad Facebook for the first time yesterday, <laughs> and that's, like, all that came up. My dad's like, oh, I don't oh. think I want to join Facebook. Oh, I deterred that's him. That's awesome. Yeah. That's how bad I am at social media. I make people not even want to be on Facebook at all. We're both so bad. I don't know. I think that's But a I do think midgets make a party better. They make a movie better. Just they make Game of Thrones better. Thank Everything, you. everything's better with midgets. Although he's not a midget, he's a dwarf. Everything you do need to Peter distinguish. English. Yeah, that too. But yeah, so every day I've been posting a picture saying invite your friends, and I get cl- people are clicking like on the pictures, and then guess what? They don't invite anybody. I haven't seen a single You're one. You're missing of them. the point, people. There's an invite thing on the right side of the page for Fleming Freedom Live at Port Facebook Fest. is really complicated, though. I guess so. I can't so. even, I I can't even click like on those. I don't, know, I don't know how. If somebody out there knows how, you should call <laughs> right. in or write into the show. Cause... All right. If you look underneath, it says like, and you click it. No, it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes right. you can't. Like, if somebody yeah. else posts something, you, you can't interact with it. Yeah. It's weird. Who knows? I wonder if there's some weird bug that's keeping people from doing that. Like, they tried to do it. No one said anything, though. They're just like, oh, yeah, click like on these... Like I said, I haven't even seen them come up, and I, I have flaming freedom as a lot as a. I don't understand. I'm a fan. There's a yeah. lot of stuff I haven't been seeing on Facebook. It's yeah, yeah. Well, you, two seconds from getting you rid actually of it. don't get most of the people that have liked flaming freedom are not getting the notifications nope. because there's 800 people who have clicked like, and Facebook only shows stuff to like three percent of them unless oh. you specifically go and scroll down from like and check off notifications. <laughs> But yeah, we will be live at Pork Fest on Saturday from 11 until 1. There'll be some refreshments to kind of help you with your hangover from the night before because Buzz's big gay dance party is the night before and a bunch of other partying on Friday night. So we're going to have hangover refreshments. And and what time is it one more time? From 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Oh, gosh, I hope I make it. Right through lunchtime, basically. That's next weekend, right? Uh, I think it's one more weekend after. Is it? Isn't it? No. Yes, it's it's, um, it's 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 two weekends from this weekend. Yes, okay. because the first weekend of Pork Fest is next 
weekend, I think. That's right. Okay. goes from like Monday through the weekend. So, and some people get there on the weekend. Ooh. It's getting early. Some people get there earlier and earlier each year. Uh, was- we're going to talk about men's rights. Someone did a good job of sort of dispelling myths about the men's rights movement. There's a group of people that are trying to, you know, advocate for certain rights to, for equality. There's a equal- we're, we're all seeking gender equality and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of men's issues that are underrepresented. And this guy does a good job of sort of dispelling myths about that. We're going to talk about the term genderism as an alternative to feminism. Uh, and I'm glad we've got Lalani on today because she and I are both big feminist fans. And oh yes, we love feminism. <laughs> are you, oh sarcasm. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, dripping. Uh, are Christian stigiophiliacs dangerous? I'm curious, Lalani's take on this in particular. You're going to find this one interesting. I should have this. Explain that. It should have been the word of the day. I'll I'll, link, I'll tell people. <laughs> like, we'll educate what? people. What's an honor killing? This kind of blew my mind. Uh, is it cruel not to put some animals to sleep, like a suffering animal? Yes. They've been injured really badly. Um, Most definitely. Um, there's a specific case I'm going to talk about. Is it still cannibalism if you only eat vegans? <laughs> We're going to talk about that later, too. Uh, I, Lauren is giving staring, me a stare. Well, that's because like, I, I've been asking you about this. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. I will explain. I will explain. This is just my teaser title for the moment, but I will explain my logistics and reasoning. And then gender changes, gender marker laws, which I believe that's a positive mean, change. Do you mean Denmark? D- what I say? You said gender. G- G- Denmark gender. changes gender marker laws. What did I say? You said gender changes I'm listening changes to that gender. in the recording. When I edit it, yeah, I'm going to edit all gender. my mistakes out of the recording so <laughs> I, I don't sound like an idiot. I think gender should change gender. I'm not even drunk this morning. I didn't. I was too busy with fixing things to even get drunk this morning. Yeah, that was a pretty stressful I'm sorry, moment. not drunk. To take my show medicine. I was too busy to take my show medicine this morning. My show prep. Yeah. So happy Father's Day, everyone. I'm off the hook for Father's Day because my dad's dead. Oof. So well, today is just vacation dad, for me. You're a kitty dad. I am a kitty dad. Yes, she, she you was, are a kitty dad. She was, you know what? She had a Father's Day present for me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like a 5 a.m. hairball. Oh, hairball. hairball. That's better than yard. It didn't come up. It didn't come up, but she wanted to make sure that I was awake <laughs> for her to try to get that hairball up on my bed. But thank goodness it didn't come up on my bed, right? But she tried really hard to get that hairball up. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I think my lungs are coming up. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Happy Father's Day to you too, kitty. Uh... Yeah, so happy Father's Day, everyone. A part of Father's Day, I guess since we're going to talk about men's rights, the men's rights movement and stuff, and and myths about it, there was a fun event that happened on Twitter. I don't know if you guys noticed, one yes, of the biggest trends on Twitter was in Wait. Father's Day hashtag. And Father's, Father's Day. Oh, right, Father's I didn't care Day. about that. I, I tried to ignore that. You know, because, I read about that this morning. Because so. patriarchy, misogyny, rape culture. Yeah. Uh, now, it's... It probably started as a hoax. Like it probably started it as a troll, sort of, by some people on 4chan who were who. Uh, like, but here's the thing: kill here's, here's all men or fuck yes. people. Well, kill all men was a for real thing. I, I don't think that was a troll. That wasn't a hoax. Um, and and fuck it, six, cis people was also real. <laughs> and awesome. I highly recommend it. I I recommend that people fuck cis people. Yeah, I, I, I yes, am please. a cis person. Fuck me. So please, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Two thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah but nothing too big please (laughs) so so here's the thing it probably did start as a hoax but a lot of feminists jumped on the bandwagon like they took the bait i was gonna say is it a hoax if it actually if people really believe it if it catches on and people it's one of the what is that rule there's a internet no no rule that's porn there's another rule that you won't be able to tell when someone's joking on the internet yeah, you can't. You can't because it's getting that ridiculous. Tag. I haven't put you guys on the cam for a long time. I'm sorry. That's okay. Nobody wants to see you. Me. They don't want to see me. They oh. want to see the ladies. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, I think we're done talking about in Father's Day. It, it, it's probably going to keep going. This is your, this is Dale. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. We'll be back in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom, where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective, what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know 
what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone two, you worthless brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. Welcome back, folks, to the Church of Flaming Freedom. Let's get it. Let's get the mood right here. Ooh. This doesn't really sound like church music, does it? it sounds like your church music. That this is church. Is, this music. would be my church music. It is church music technically. Oh, but it's yes. always in like horror movies. No, it's Phantom of the Opera. No. No. Oh. Most. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Most of that old get the organ idea. music is church music. We're going to do a lot of preaching this morning. <laughs> All right. Let me correct a derp. We're gonna, we, I've got a guest on who's going to argue with me in just a moment, so I'm going to ask him to hold for, for just a little bit longer. My derp for last episode, Lauren, was, you're going to be very angry with yeah, me. Yeah, I, I, I get said, sick for one week, and you just, you uh, guys can't you hear control me? yourselves. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> I can't remember. Okay. Well, um, we were talking about the, the how, how how sexual orientation is a scale, a sliding scale, and, and like you're kind of in the middle, right? You're, oh, uh, yeah. Um, bisexual and stuff. And I said, well, maybe I'm even, I'm, I consider myself completely gay, but maybe I'm just a little bit bisexual because I am sometimes attracted to trans men. Okay. And, but that's, no, that's a horrible thing to say because it, it doesn't have anything to do with that. I, the, I'm only, I'm still only gay. Um, I would, and, and I it was a stupid thing to say. Depends on, well, but I don't you, think that but, makes you bisexual at all because <laughs> they're not women, they're, they're guys. But if you, and I, I'm only attracted to them. If they look so, like guys, I, they, that's this is why know. like the whole gender sexuality spectrums are kind of BS because it's based on the uh, the interpretations of the individual. So you as an individual are interpreting that a vagina is um, a, feminine. a feminine thing, yeah. but it, no, I not. really don't though. That's the thing. Like no, I, really, I, I know. I, well, I, I think you probably even, don't. If, in, in trans guys who haven't had bottom surgery, I don't think of that I think the same. That's a guy. Those are guy, and if you've ever seen guy photos bits. of that, the guy it bits. doesn't we'll just seem that, like, feminine at all. No, but it's a guy it, with right. two entrances instead of one. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with finding that no, attractive. No, 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 but it was stupid to say that that makes me a little bit bisexual. That's what I mean. I'm still completely gay. Hmm. So that hmm. was a derp, and I apologize to any everyone uh, for that. Th don't don't say stuff like that. I was okay. I had too much show medicine, but that's not an excuse. I st I, I'm still responsible for my decisions. Even after lots of show medicine, you know, so. I, that's not a bad derp. That's just a small derp. It's not. Yeah. A, it's not a herp derp. That's for sure. It's not a herp derp, but it's a derp. I'm learning what these I things guess. are finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a a a our, our professional transport. Not really, but Profe our, professional. Our I guess professional. Trans, professional. Yeah. Our ex our local expert this. on trans issues has pardoned me. Sure. Are you issuing a pardon? Of course. Yeah. Okay. I, no, because it's, it's very confusing. I, in fact, I don't even think you were wrong. All right, let's get it Alan on. He's been confusing. waiting patiently. He's going he's oh, gonna, gonna to lay into me about this, uh, seeking the government <laughs> to acknowledge the contracts that people make. Hello, Go ahead, Alan. Alan. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so let me ask you, um, why can't civil unions do the same thing? I, I, uh, I have no problem how it's done. I just want the rights. Okay, because civil unions, which have been legal longer than gay marriage do what gay marriage does. The only difference is um, you can't claim on tax forms and you can't get social, their social security benefits when they die. Your partner's social security benefits when they Those die. Those are big though. You're, you're, you're paying big, more taxes but, for being gay. If you cannot file as a couple. Okay. But the, the Christians, for example, were, were willing to give in on the uh, civil unions issue rather than give gays gay marriage. Okay. So what was the whole it's point? Better than, in... It's better than nothing. I mean, I know that I know that for a lot of liberals out there, they and we've talked about this on the show before, gay marriage is they need the government to validate them. They're probably, I, in fact, I worry, I worry that, uh, that, that they've been, had bad experiences with their families and the government is their new family, their new parents, and they're looking for gay marriage to validate them. And that's very disturbing for me. 
They um, are looking for gay marriage to validate them, but I don't think they're looking for it in the way you think. Uh -huh. um, it's more they believe that if they can have gay marriage, then their families will suddenly accept, accept them and welcome them and mm. the world will be a much friendlier place. But it's a delusion. Mm. Some people, well, some people might react to the government's validating it. I, 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 I can't say for sure. That, now, you know, that's not what I'm arguing. I don't care uh, about yeah. any of that stuff. I'm simply I, I looking at the fact that people are punished, in, in effect, because the government is involved in our lives in so many ways, if their relationships are not acknowledged by the government. I, if we end up paying more taxes, we're effectively subsidizing all the straight marriages out there. And I'm all for getting government out of marriage. But that's going to be a very, very long time unless the government just collapses uh, because then the government is involved in so many things. That, that's my okay. point. But pushing for civil unions, one, that would be easier to get because you're not fighting the, social, uh, the conservatives on whether or not they're going to be willing to give marriage. Are you talking about just the, the word? So, like, oh, oh, it's just saying just yeah, give up the yes. word and it'll be okay? <laughs> well... There's more to it than that, because there's all that, all the meme, the entire meme that's attached to marriage. Okay. And gay marriage will destroy gay culture. Okay, this is the part Ooh. that I think you really wanted to get to. Because, uh, yeah. But you don't think civil unions will. Right. That's, that's interesting. Let, let me, Lauren had something to say, though. What was, what was on your mind, Lauren? Um, I heard you peep. For no, a I'm, I'm actually really interested in in the whole I, I, the idea of gay culture or like a freer culture and and you know the but I, I don't know that we, I think we can still go back to that. I don't I know that ultimately it may it may vanish and we may have newer cultures that replace it. But I think you can still go back to it. But I did want to address the uh, the whole identity aspect of this. It you see it seems like it's a, a limiting a limiting of freedom of speech if you say that you can't call yourself married or you can't it just seems like well, you, can always you should call have the option of, of civil union <laughs> and married no you can call people yourself been doing that want, long but, for some time actually <laughs> right but people want it written down on that official yeah. piece of paper and i'm saying official with huge air quotes yeah right. huge and, air quotes because the government says you're official right yeah it's i it, it's a joke <laughs> yeah go ahead but, Alan. but i would argue that that is that that is dangerous the official part of marriage the legal part of marriage is dangerous because you have this whole concept built up besides just the legal marriage. There's this entire cultural background behind it. So, for example, I was reading, um, and there was this article talking about how study finds, let's see, this is from Gay Star, Gay Star News, um, study finds men become less promiscuous, gay men become less promiscuous. Oh, no. And it talks about, it talks about, <laughs> How since gay marriage is legalized, gay men have become less promiscuous. Okay. There, there's a correlation there between what is expected. You're, you're, so you're okay. saying that we're culturally being, the people's ex the expectations on people are causing them to change their behavior. We're being enculturated. Mm -hmm. It's, you, you have to, we're giving you this, and we're giving you this so that you become part of white culture. Right. The same thing. Right. The same thing happened to the blacks. So yeah. I know blacks, what you're talking yes. about. Actually, if you've been if you've listened to Thaddeus Russell, if you've been listening to the School Sucks podcast, they've been talking about this. This kind of what what it means to be white, and it and it's not just your skin color. It's it's really the whole this culture of what whiteness was. And he talks about blackface and Irish people how they used to do blackface, and it was a tribute to black people. It was like they were you know uh, mixing and mingling with blacks, and all this stuff happened. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Alan, stick around. I want to hear more what you have to say, okay? Okay. Is that all right? Try to stay awake. This is Dale at Flaming Freedom. We'll be right back. So we have something to talk about later on during the vegan segment. We were just talking about whether, would you rather be raped or eaten? Good oh. question. Not a good question. Stupid question. But we're going to ask it anyway later on because that's who we are. We're Flaming Freedom. Stupid questions are fun. Yeah, let's get Alan on right away because I know he's tired. He hasn't slept today. Alan, hi, it's Dale at Flaming Freedom. And all Lauren right, and back. So um all right, so we have some thoughts to share with you. Uh, uh Lauren and I L Lelania and I were actually talking and I feel like what you're presenting, I understand what you're saying. That there's gonna be extra pressure on gay people to be monogamous, right? 
If, because it's of gay not, marriage. It's not just monogamous. It's everything that goes along with gay culture. It's the gay pride parades. <laughs> okay. The, the loudness of the clubs, everything okay. that goes along with being gay. So it will be majorly toned down. Well, let me ask this though. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, people, but the, giving someone the option to get married and have it be, it's a contract that adults do with each other and say, we want to be treated as family. Mm-hmm. And then having the government acknowledge that is just adding options to them. And I understand the, the cultural argument, but the other side of that I'm seeing is, I feel like as a culture overall, we're becoming much more open to sexual diversity, polyamory, pup, being promiscuous, if desired. All these things seem much more accepted in modern culture. It feels like conser- social conservatives are losing, and they're losing quickly. Okay, so I don't but, feel like who, this is... is it, how big of a threat is, is this? Is what I'm wondering. Hmm? It's, it's a really big threat. Who is driving that cultural push? Wouldn't you think it? gay people are? I know it's our big party. It's it's not just it's not just gay people. Mm -hmm. It's the queer culture, which does include straight people. It's BDSM swingers, everyone of that that ilk. Queer is just anyone not of the normal mode. Okay, so you're saying it's going to take steam out of the movement, which is going really well right now. Right. You're acknowledging that we're making progress toward less stuffiness. (laughs) We are, but but gay marriage is a slide back. So here's here's a, another presentation. So in the UK, they had legal civil unions. Whatever happens over there within 10 years, it comes to the US, okay? Okay. So when that happened, we were almost 100% guaranteed civil unions within the next 10 years. And that was, what, three, four years ago? Um, but the reason for the push were certain very recognizable gay people who really want to shame the slut culture within the gay culture, if you will. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I would acknowledge and, those people exist. Yeah. Right. And so they didn't want part of the reason they didn't want civil unions was because you could have multiple contracts simultaneously going on. Okay. So let me, let me propose this. There's a thug, a bully in the playground. And he's not letting you play. He doesn't want to let you play. What do you do? You take your ball and you go play somewhere else and you invite everybody else to come play and you're not going to be a bully and you're not going to tell them all what to do and this, that, and the other thing. And they're going to come, want to come play with you. Civil unions are a threat to white culture. Because what happens when you have straight people going for contract civil unions that last one, five, 10, 20 years? Okay. So they're, and, they're, more easy, they're easy, more easily dissolved than a marriage, is what you're saying. Right. Whereas a marriage is, well, not, the expectation of a marriage, at least, is that it's for life. Not only yeah. easily dissolved, but in some cases, predetermined, at this date, they dissolve. I see. Lauren, Lelaine so, had something to say about, about white, this being white culture. Like monogamy okay. as a white, didn't you? Yeah, no, I don't see monogamy as a strictly white or american or even european idea it's been around in multiple cultures for hundreds of thousands of years Bullshit. to varying degrees Bullshit. You're, calling, you're calling bs okay really i'm, I'm up. absolutely yeah so huh. one i i, I that, that's news to me to actually to hear that like i don't think it's i think it's a fairly new phenomenon actually well, it, i said to is, varying I'm, degrees yeah. there, I mean, there are look, different ideas of what marriage meant to different cultures you can look at just native american cultures and some th- each different tribe had different ideas of what marriage meant to them and what kind of unions they allowed and okay. recognized and uh, they're all very different but I think uh, institutionalized marriage or institutionalized monogamy to the level that it is Governmental actually existing indi- at. Yeah. yeah, and actually like forced monogamy or monogamy that's spreading way past the borders. Well, I say borders. There's also but, just there's also just the I, times the times dictated what relationships were to a large extent in times when human beings were desperate to survive, which wasn't terribly long ago. I mean, you said hundreds of thousands of years. I think that's really pushing it. Um, uh, just going back pre agriculture. When time, when you had men dying off left and right and, and polygamy was, was, it, it, survival depended on it, I think. 
You, 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 so, you, there weren't enough men for there to have monogamy because <laughs> well, they died. But that's still a type of, of marriage to a, you know, that's, no, that's still, fine, you not, take care of this person until yeah, sure. somebody dies. Right. But it's, sure. it's polygamy. It's not monogamy. And it was much more it's tribal. I, I think also that you had, it was very tribal. It was less, it was, it was not nuclear family, even with a father and multiple wives or something like that. It was more just tribes of men and women and fewer men just because things were dangerous and the men had to be the ones that go out and died and, and fought off the saber toothed tigers and so forth. I know saber toothed tigers didn't exist at the same time, whatever, but, <laughs> but you get the idea. And, uh, well, so, so it's just necessity dictated uh, what relationships were. Alan, I didn't mean Alan, hundreds Alan, of thousands. I, have a question. I meant hundreds and thousands. Oh, okay. Not, right. not hundreds, hundreds and thousands. thousands. Okay. Right. Oh. Hundreds, even Fair enough. thousands. Fair enough. So you're, you're saying, Alan, that like it's more about the, the culture of monogamy is, is a white person thing, not so much actual, the, like the biological concept of it. Is that correct? The biological concept is a fraud, but the culture is <laughs> destructive and pernicious. Would you say that the biological concept can exist in other species other than human? No. Really? Because it does. There, 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 are, there are animals that are well, monogamous. Okay. It's not okay. most of them, but some there of them are. There are less than 5% of all animals that are monogamous. Uh, uh, that's probably and, true, yeah. And even most, even most of those are not monogamous. The studies have been skewed. The prairie vole is a perfect example. The prairie vole is not monogamous, and yet scientists say it is. Why? Because the prairie vole male will will raise uh, offspring that are not its own, even while it's going out and screwing every female it can find, and even while the female is going out and screwing every male it will find. That is not monogamy. Hmm. No, but there are some animals that are. My problem with this is it kind of forces people who want to be monogamous and makes it so that they can't be, which I have a problem with. Or at least punishes if, for them for right, it, right? You, in the form of subsidizing monogamy at their cost and things like that. Yeah, I think it should all be permissible, but the idea that we don't want monogamy in the gay culture is kind of disenfranchising those who do wish to be monogamous. If someone wishes to be monogamous, they are more than welcome to do that. It does not change the fact that it is not natural. Hmm. But it might be natural to them. All right. I think we have a difference here. I don't know if this can be resolved. No, it's worldview it, at this it, point. It's, uh, I mean, it, maybe you can look up articles and studies and things, and we can continue that conversation about whether it's a natural thing or not. I understand where you're coming from. Um, I've said I'm monogamously oriented myself, but honestly, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dating. I'm dating and stuff right now. But uh, there's times I'm going. Ah, I just kind of want to be by myself. So I'm not completely sure I'm I'm <laughs> monogamously oriented anymore, um, but uh, but I de I can see I I think it's tough to argue from a biological point of view. Uh, I I think that even from a social point of view though, like I I have I, mean, I used to have a spouse and we were monogamous, like officially sex sexually monogamous. However, that didn't mean that I didn't have close relationships with friends or even you know male friends, female friends, in between friends. Um, and ha you can love other people and really care about them. So there's all of these different components of what uh, a social or social orientation is. All right. You know, it's not just about sexuality as well. Cool. So all right. I, I, I do understand what you're saying. Ellen, okay, and I'm but really now, interested. you did say you're going to argue that was the worst thing ever. It is. Yes, it's the worst no, thing ever. Because, still, <laughs> because let's let's take let's take Hitler for example. Okay. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Uh, Hitler comes along. You, you have a hair that rises. I think Hitler okay. just ended it. I think you're going to have to he, post he a comment. We're going to wrap this up for now, but All right. I think I have to post a comment on today's show, and people should go read that uh, right. to tell us about Hitler. Uh, everyone, thank you for listening to Flame Freedom. Stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks, Alan. All right. Okay, so for those of you who are joining us late, you missed uh, a heated debate and a controversial subject, so we're going to move on to calmer... Uh, Less controversial territory, i.e. feminism. Yeah. <laughs> There's more sarcasm there. Nothing it's, but it's still getting more and more. It's getting more and more controversial, and I think part of that is because a lot of men are starting to speak up. And uh, with regard to certain things, certain things, I think uh, the first thing I should say is that we're, that we're all for gender equality here, I think. Oh, At yeah. Least, no. Uh, not, not. Not, not, not really. <laughs> no. I'm for equal beings, different treatment. Yeah, well. Sort of. I, I, I think I'm kind oh, of. I'm going to have to I'm for that. equality in the same way that I'm for marriage and that you, you should have the option. Yeah. But like right. you, Lelania, have chosen a life of being a homemaker. Yeah. 
I and, love uh, it. A very tra- you've chosen a traditional female role, essentially. Absolutely. Um, you know, you 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 could do something else if you wanted. Um, and I'm and I would want those options to be there for you. Well, and you I've wanted, tried it, without so I know I don't like it. Okay. It's not like you know my husband bought me over the head and dragged me directly from my parents' house. No, I yeah. had years without being married, years of going out and making my own living and having like a career path, and I hated it. I absolutely but, hated it. Hmm. Um, can I? Pre- yeah, I hear you. Can I preface the femi- feminism talk just for, just for a second? Go ahead. So everybody's asking the question, like, do we need feminism? Like, uh, there's a lot of hatred towards feminists. And <clears throat> the reason for that is we kind of like in some cultures, we don't need it. And it's actually just hurting. Like, it's there's too much push. And then there's all kinds of blowback from it. So feminism is important in parts of the world where people don't understand that women are the same as men or th- like th- there's places in the world that they just don't get it. Oh, and, I, I think and, it's important to sort of distinguish Western culture feminism from those yes. places where there are women being forced to wear burqas and, and there's some, you know, I, so, uh, it's, yeah. it's a first world, first world problem. So fe- being a feminist <laughs> and, and dealing with those issues is really important. And I support those people who call themselves feminists. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't personally, but, but I think it's great for the people that do. But you don't now, call yourself a feminist? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I don't either, but it's less about the goal, like, like the stated goals. Like, if you look up the definition, the stated goals of feminism, I probably call myself that. Sure. But I don't use sure. the word in the same way. Like, if, if, if there was a group that started up a, a white power movement that didn't have any racism, mm-hmm. that it was just their name, <laughs> I would probably not want to be a, I wouldn't want to label myself that because there's too much hate associated with that title. Right. And it's the same thing with feminism. The, the mainstream speakers, if you look at the people that are being taught in gender studies classes, the ones that the, the recommended reading and, and the, uh, the mainstream voices, you know, there's any particular individual feminist, and I know some of them who are cool, they're totally fine, um, but the mainstream voices and the mainstream movement is full of hate. Oh. And it's a hate, I think it's a hate movement against men and it, it, for well, political that, purposes. Yeah. And, and there, but there's some people, that's because some people just can't let it go. Like uh, anarchism, for example. Okay. If you're an anarchist, like I think that's kind of cool to call yourself right now because we're living in a time and a place where you need that. We need more anarchists in the world. Okay. Um, at least it's in this actually, part that, of and world. that word is getting dispelled and it in is. terms and of a lot of the, a lot of the uh, fear mongering attached to it has been dispelled of recent. That, right. Yeah, not, not, not completely. There's, some, there's a long way to go. Some progress made there. And and back in the days, back when uh, Mary Wollstonecraft was writing Vindication of the Rights of Women, and like back in the classical feminism days. Those of you who are we're, watching us on Ustream, we uh, Lelania's got a spittoon over here, and she chews tobacco. Oh. Every now and then, she leans <laughs> over and ding. Oh, so and, not true. No, just no, clearing she's my just, throat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I, I was ahead, believing Lauren. you. No, I'm totally thrown off now. But, but cla- classical feminism. That's horrible. I, I mean, interrupted you. Those feminists were really radical. Like, that was a crazy idea. Like, oh, women have rights? Women are like, <laughs> women can think? No way. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, it and now it's like right. being a good movement. Yeah. And, but then... And kind of Some people happened. would argue even that. I don't know quite enough historically to say that. I've heard it, it depends on who you're talking about. It even well, at that time there yeah. were some. Yeah, you talk about no, 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 yeah. women's suffrage. Yeah, that was a good move. Trying to spin it yeah. positively. Um, those were that was when it was required and needed. Much like the civil rights movement, when black people were not allowed to do a lot of stuff and they had a lot of Jim Crow laws. We don't need it anymore. But the problem is the people yeah. who were pushing those things were in power. And in order to maintain their power, they have to maintain the idea that the it's going. still a problem. <laughs> right. Right. You Sorry. Go ahead, Lauren. Going. I totally subsume that. <clears throat> no, that that's fine. I, I was going to try to speak out against suffrage. Well, uh, for uh, everybody. But. And here's the thing. So there's a the same time as Pork Fest. So don't, don't go to it. Go to Pork Fest instead. But <laughs> otherwise, I would say go to it. If you can't go to Pork Fest and you're closer to Detroit, the men's rights, there's a men's rights conference. I think a voice for men is sponsoring it. Yeah. And they had to, their hotel had to cancel on them. They didn't have to, but they were threatened with uh terror, literally threatened with people being hurt and, and terrorist threats that said that you're going to have to produce thousands of dollars of security. So they raised the money for thousands of dollars worth of security because of feminist threatening uh, things there to, to keep them from, from even being able to have a conference and talk about things. And then, so they raised the money for that, and then the hotel still said no. It just was too scary for them. 
Uh, and this is the hotel's decision. So they end up moving to a different place. I think it's less right in the city and more in the suburbs or something, but it's bigger so they can have more people or something. But um, this is a common thing. And when if a speaker comes to a school to talk about men's issues, things like custody issues, things like uh, wanting to have due process before you convict someone of rape. Child uh, support. Which is outra- which child support. One way. Yeah, child support. Um that oftentimes men are are homeless and can't even you know, just trying to pay their child support payments and and things like that. There, there's a bunch of issues. There's a ton of them, and a lot of it is uh it, and 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 feminists will show up in force to protest and they will pull fire alarms. They will shout in people's faces, try to keep them from going into the thing to even hear someone speak. And my my attitude about anyone, if you if there's someone saying something stupid, let them say it and then respond to it. Don't shut them down. If you're trying, if you're the one trying to shut someone else up and not even let their voice be heard, you're fr- you're threatened by what they're saying because you're afraid it makes sense and you don't have points to argue it. And that's I think is exactly what's happening here. And it, yep. this is this is rampant. This is a rampant problem. And and one of the criticisms, and I'm just going to bring this up. It's not in the article, but one of the criticisms of the men's rights uh, of people, men's rights advocates, is that it's just a response. Like feminism happened, and it's just countering it. I think there's some validity to that claim, and I don't think it's a bad thing, because if there's a hate movement and something comes up to counter that hate movement, I really think a lot of, a lot of men are just trying to defend themselves from what is a hate movement. But, and the way to know if you, whether a particular person who calls themselves a feminist is a, what they call a feminazi, replace, a, a, their, take an article they've written or something, take anywhere where the word men is, replace it with Jews, and then read it again. If they sound like a Nazi... That's a feminazi. And you'd be, your mind will be blown. Start doing that. And you will see exactly what I'm talking about when I say that feminism is a hate movement. Go ahead. That's an interesting uh, tool to use. And, and with modern computers, you can just go through and zip Yeah, yeah, you could do a word replace replacement and then just read it or show it to someone and see how they react. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God, who is this anti-Semite? Yeah. No, no, that's a feminazi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then there's the difference. Again, so, I have to say this because I know women you, personally who are good friends of mine who call themselves feminists. I don't con- I don't I don't yeah. lump them in with the feminists. Yeah, there's some really great feminists out there. I I, I kudos to you guys for yeah. trying to do what you're doing. Um, I'd like to point out something, and I totally forgot what it was because I was thinking about all the cool feminists. <laughs> and now I have to think back to the not cool ones. All right. <laughs> oh, you you were talking about men's rights, uh, MRAs, men's rights advocates, yes. or activists or whatever the the acronym stands for um some of those folks they it, it, it may be blowback or pushback or a reaction to feminism but that doesn't mean it's not important it, that's I think my that's, point that's Thank a you. very important that's the point you were trying to make. that was the point i was is, trying to make Thank is you. that yes it, it may be just blowback but it's really necessary I, I feel and, like a lot of critical men, that we have these discussions. Men, men have the, the thing. If you, if you ever talk about patriarchy without, for instance, bringing up gynocentrism, or matri- which is the counterpart the to it, which is like, for instance, that men are expected to provide care for, uh, potentially sacrifice themselves for the benefit of women, and that a lot of male power. Yes, men have been in positions of power, a fra- tiny little fraction of the men. Most of them have been working in coal mines and dying and working the jobs that suck and uh, that, that have the highest mortality rates and all this other stuff because they're expected to provide care for and protect women uh, and, and do things to prevent women from having to do them. If you, do, if you fail to acknowledge this other side of the coin, then that's, ob- that's an incredibly myopic view that, will, that makes it really easy to say, oh, they're really evil and they're just trying to exploit us. It, it takes some incredible tunnel vision to do that. And um, so what I was, what I was getting at is... Uh, I, I, I use the word genderism. That's the word I'm, I'm using, and it's a bad word. I, it's the word to represent something bad, which is that you're that you're treating someone unfairly based on their gender, and uh, and that should stop. We should be trying to end genderism. I, I, I like that word better than talking than saying feminism because feminism is just is a very myopic. How the word you, itself is myopic. How would you define unfairly though? Because everybody treats every other gender very differently. Yeah. It's just something we work towards. I don't know where the line is. There's biology. There's how much is nature versus nurture that separates the genders. I don't know all those answers. I'm willing to talk about it and look into the, those answers, but uh, it, it's not easy. It, it's going to take work. This is Flaming Freedom. We'll be back in just a little bit, so stay tuned. Should murder be legal? That's no. The, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a teaser question for another show. 
There's a great article written about whether murder should be legal, though. And, and I'll try to find it for you to read. There's a bunch of cheesy 80s films about you, it, too. You, oh, you won't believe the arguments. That, it wasn't so much arguments, actually. We had some great discussions during the break that you're all missed out on. Sorry about that. Uh, Word <laughs> definitions. They changed the hear entire this. We need, argument. Right. We need you to hear our sponsors on the Liberty Radio Network. This is your host, Dale. And Lania. And Lauren. And I would like to remind everyone, that I've been forgetting to do this, that you can Skype us at In Your Head Shows. Uh, that's what Alan did when we had our discussion earlier. You can always Skype us and uh, argue with us about stuff. Bring up a new topic if you'd like. That's the, that's the glory of, of a call-in show. And In Your and Head Shows is of, all one word, right? In Your Head Shows is one, one word on Skype as an account name. And... And and again, that's uh, that's why you should be listening to us live. If you're listening to the download podcast right now, that's awesome. And 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 share it. Click like and share on Facebook and Google Plus and all that stuff. And check out our YouTube channel. But listening to us live, you can uh, call in and uh, get on to us for saying stupid things. I'm bad. I listen to the podcast. So um, real quickly, I don't want to talk about this too much longer, but um, I will link an article about. Uh, uh, someone who dispels a lot of myths about about the men's rights advocacy and what that's about. And I, I think we were talking about women's suffrage during the break. Yes. At one point, and and of course, I'm all for women being able to vote. But but if you, you if you look at the history, and we were saying, oh, the early feminists were fine, but then it went bad. Well, here's the thing: when men argued for the right to vote, men didn't always get to vote. By the way, it's a relatively recent phenomenon that men could vote. And you say, Dale, what the hell are you talking about? That's everybody, men and women. Well. Certain people could vote if they owned a lot of property. If they right? were white to, landowners, they could to, vote originally. Right. And then for, there's a period of time it was, it was attached to wealth and things like that. I think black people got the right to vote before women, right? Yes. Black men black got the right to vote. Black landowning men black got to vote before men. women. So it, it, it was about property, owning property. And guess what men said in order to get the right to vote? And, and, and it made good sense at the time. They said, this is ridiculously unfair. You want me to go to war. You want to be able to conscript me. into the, You want to be able to draft me into the army to go and fight battles and defend your property. But you're telling me I can't vote? So you're asking for this incredible responsibility from me. You're asking me to die for you, but you're telling me I can't vote. And that's how they got the vote. I mean, that was a big part of the argument. So when women's suffrage came around, do you think they said, hey, we want to be conscripted too so that we can vote? Right. No, no. And this is what you're seeing all along. This is another thing that I see that I, this is a big beef I have with the feminist movement. They'll say, oh, well, we want... The responsibilities as well, but they're left and right getting all kinds of rights without responsibilities that came with them. That there are all these responsibilities that were attached and to manhood, which I don't necessarily agree with that either. I, I want conscription I think, to end. I, and I'm not. You, we're not saying that the responsibilities are a good thing either. No, conscription's uh, uh, terrible. That, we're libertarians. This goes back to exactly what Alan was talking about. The before. draft this is that should white never culture. Happen. This is yeah. exactly the thing yeah. that we don't want. Right. And so. Like, it's spun as this great thing. Like, oh, look, man, you but have this, the right I to think vote. This is, Isn't that great? Try to and understand the why there's is, a... Is the, it's not saying you have the right to vote. It's saying we have the right to kill you now. Isn't that right. great? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. So, I, yeah, it's important to say. I'm just, I'm just trying to point out that what's happening is all kinds of rights being handed over to women without the, uh, the accompanying responsibility. And... Uh, and presumably this is sometime in the distant future. Oh, it's going to work out. You're, we're gonna, you're gonna get, the, things are going to get better for men eventually. And, and it's not happening. That's not, every, left and right, if you look at the things that are happening, it's continuing to suck for men more and more. We're, we're, uh, all these things were, were attached to responsibilities for men. I'd like to see those responsibilities go away. I think conscription should end, period. I don't want women to now be conscripted. I want them to still be able to vote. I don't care about voting, to be honest with you. But just on the basis of equality, as long as it's around, yes, you shouldn't discriminate against women, of course. But... Uh, but again, it's it's a, it's it's very one sided thing. More and more rights without the responsibilities. All these responsibilities are still on men. Men are still expected to fight, die, protect, provide for women. I, it's a good thing to have rights without responsibilities, though, isn't it? Yeah. I, what do I have to do? Do I have to repeat myself? Are you listening to me? I'm just I'm just helping the listener because <laughs> it seems kind of counter. Like this is right. I, I, if you're if you are a part of that given. culture, just, the just, white culture. Yeah. You think like, oh no, responsibilities where it's at. Having a job well, and going to work. Kidding? Why do you think our lives responsi my, my always come with responsibilities, though? We are. I think we're as a libertarian. Of course, I think we are expected to provide for ourselves and our families. There Everybody are personal is. responsibilities. Yeah, personal yes. right. Responsibilities but come I, with having rights. But I think what Dale said, and he's absolutely right, is that the feminist movement became 
I want the rights of being a female and being treated like a female, and I want all of men's rights at the same time without any of the drawbacks or responsibilities required of me for either role. And it's and it's not I just that. I want to be a woman, but not have to work. I want to be a woman, but be able to if I want to. Now they can be on the front lines if they want to. They can't be forced to. Men are still expe- are forced to. That's yeah. still the case. Even when it, even with voluntary military, women can now choose to go to the front lines. They don't have to. Yeah. And it just blows my mind that that doesn't that bother anyone <laughs> that it's that it's now an option for women that it's never been an option for men. It's, oh no, I, I want to join the military, but I want a desk job. Yeah, we no. were. we're oh, you got a wiener. It. You're going straight to the front lines. Um, Sorry, actually, I don't know if that's it necessarily subtle. true. No, it's, as being in, being in the military. All right, you can answer it in the comments. Uh, well, we, actually, we're going to be on this too right. long. So, and the other <laughs> thing, it's in subtle ways. Is is if you look at, for instance, like now that like uh, like if someone is. The, the rape is being broadened out to mean different things. Uh, rape is uh, one of those areas where the data is horribly skewed in so many ways to make it men to demonize men. Uh, a lot more men are raped than people know. It's it's it, more men are raped, raped than women, especially if you count prison rapes. But if you start counting rapes that are not defined as rape because you weren't penetrated, like if you were forced to penetrate someone else, it starts to get more and more equal. So there's all these skewed data out, all this skewed data out there. But the other thing is defining rape. For instance, if you if you if you have sex with a woman who's drunk, not passed out, mind you, drunk, uh, even if you're drunk as well, that is often considered a rape, and and a lot of feminists will consider that a rape. And I'm like, hold on, how co- how 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 come you're not saying, well, maybe she raped him? They're both drunk, and that's because the guy still holds all the responsibility yeah. if he drinks or not. As soon as she drinks, she doesn't have responsibility anymore. She can't even mm-hmm. consent. She's a child. And that is not good for equality to start treating women as if they're children and, and, and not, these are all subtle things. Again, re- benefits and rights without responsibility that goes with it. So I don't, yeah, we shouldn't spend forever on that, but, but leave a comment on today's show and maybe we can talk about it in a future episode. And don't get me yeah. started like on the whole wage gap that doesn't exist. Right. That there's, that's a myth too. It's been debunked Complete so many times. Myth. It's been thoroughly debunked. I mean, there's maybe a tiny two or 3% wage gap. It's, no, it it's, actually when they when they do all in some cases it was for the men other and way. <laughs> women who work in the same job doing the same thing have the same experience and have and, never been married and have never been married they make the same amount sometimes yeah. women make more than men and sometimes men make more than women and there's a lot like, of jobs that, that are dominated by out. men because women don't want to do them yeah <laughs> like some of the like, most we dangerous, don't want to be crab catchers out the in the 15 ocean we'll most, die the fifteen most dangerous jobs are male dominated a, a lot yeah. and and it's not because people aren't letting women do it it's because women don't fucking want to do it or we and they can't, aren't under pressure we can't to meet be the providers. physical requirements because let's be <laughs> yeah. honest without testosterone women mm. generally speaking not are not strong. as strong as men yeah. sorry folks we're yeah. different Stigio- stigiophiliacs i know you're curious about this yes yeah what is that i uh, educate me it is it is sexual arousal by the idea of hellfire and eternal damnation do you have that what dale no Oh dear God! <laughs> well, you're a Satanist, so you know the no, the, the newer listeners. You are listening understand, to what like, I mean by Satanism, if that's what you no, think. No, I am listening. I'm just trolling you. I know. <laughs> that's a whole new level of kink. I do not understand. Yeah. So, so then, so that raises the question. That's a real thing, and there are they're out there. Just about everything is is out there somewhere. Any kink you can think of. Rule thirty four. So th- that's a scary person to me, but only if you're also a Christian, because if you're a stigiophiliac. In the same way that some people are like furries, like they know they're never going to be a, a bipedal tiger person, but it still turns them on to think about it. It's like, okay, it's just this fantasy you have and you draw pictures of it and you masturbate to it. That's fine. But if you believe in hell <laughs> and you're turned on by the idea of going there, what would you do to satisfy your fantasy? <laughs> you're like, well, if your goal is to get to hell because it's like a huge turn on for you. If you actually think hell is fire and brimstone, well, that's interesting because I don't see that anywhere well, in there. It could be anything, though. Like, there's people who are massively turned on by pain. Have you seen, have you read yeah. Clive Barker? No. He's a prevert, big time. Mm, prevert. No. He's a, all these people getting, like, cut up in pieces and stuff. He's <gasps> obviously turned off, turned Ew. on by that. So if he could go somewhere where it happens forever and he doesn't die, eh, you never know. We'll be back in a moment. This is Flaming Freedom. Stay tuned. Digiophiliacs. Those are fun. They're not fun. They're kind of scary. I'd like to meet one, though. I think that would be cool. uh, I think that's strange. I don't. I think they might be a psychotic killer. 
because they're trying to get into hell. Get Imagine the things you're willing well, to do. If you really believe in heaven, this is, my whole thing was, uh, this is Flaming Freedom, by the way, with your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Elena. And Elena. So uh, we were talking about stygiophiliacs. They have a, a, a fetish about hell. And I assume they're massively masochist. And the thought is, oh, I can have pain, no limit, because I won't die from anything or whatever. I don't know. I mean, there's masochists out there with uh, some pretty ridiculous limits. So, so who knows? But I, I just think about, I, I used to argue with people, like, look, I, it's not I don't want to believe in heaven. Believe me, I, I love the idea of it. If, if, if I really believed in heaven, the things I would do, it, an eternity of bliss and perfection, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is, is really awesome. That's what, you know, you can have a lot of different notions about what it is, but it's really awesome. We, that's the idea. And, uh, and so if I really believed in it, I, I wouldn't be, this, this is what bugs me when people don't, don't, they don't trust the sincerity of my atheism. Like, I just don't want to believe. Why would I not want to believe? I don't care what rules you have for me. I don't care if you want me to be abstinent for my whole life. I don't care if you want me to do volunteer work my whole life and experience no pleasure whatsoever my entire life. Just just a, a hundred years of, of misery, uh, of, of, of being under tyrannical laws, which I consider some of the Christian laws to be. <laughs> I, I can do all that if I actually believed in it. It's not an issue of sincerity. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying not to believe. I just don't believe in it. So I think of the things I'd be willing to do. I made a comment one time. I said, I, you know, I'd... I'd clean the pavement with my tongue my whole life or something like that. If that's what it took to get into heaven, if I believed in it, it's, it's not an issue of sincerity. So, uh, so I just wonder what would someone who's trying to get into hell do? I don't know that. <laughs> I, that begs the question. They want to make sure they go to hell. <laughs> is this a fantasy that they really do want to come true? Or is this a fantasy that's fun in the mind, but is not fun in reality? Because those totally exist. I, I think it must, I, I, I think that must be more likely in most of these cases i can't imagine i i yeah, wonder so it's like a role playing but, but that kind of gets thing. into well, like I how mean, many that can send them i've argued before i said how many people i'm sorry Lelania, you can get on me for this but how many people are like really really deeply sincerely believe in their in their christianity <laughs> because yeah I, I i believe you i'm not gonna I, see it would be it would be incredibly hypocritical of me to say i there's people who doubt the sincerity of my atheism and then for me to turn around and, and doubt the sincerity of, but I do think there are a lot of Christians out there. Maybe you're not one of them. I'm, I, I doubt, but there are a lot of Christians out there. I think that are, what is the word? Holier the, than the, now? The, what is the word for just in case? Believing just in case? Oh, I don't know. Like, yeah. oh, no, I don't understand just, the concept. They've, they've had enough. Fear hedging of, their bets type of yeah, thing. Hedging their bets. Yeah, hedging their bets. There's a there's a there's a there's a term for there's a theory out there based on you should believe just in case. Oh, uh, Pascal. Pascal think. theory. There you yeah, go. Yeah, Pascal's the Pascal's theorem or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a lot of that. I think a lot of people that have been scared enough by hell and like and scared enough by death, like the idea of their their consciousness not continuing, that they want to believe, and so they they kind of sort of mostly convince themselves. But, yeah. it, you know, and, and, and someone like that, I'm sure there are a lot of stygiophiliacs that, that are the same way. Well, I mean, like, it's right yeah. up there with, well, do you have any rape fantasies? Do you have any gangbang fantasies? Do you have any strangers right. on a train having sex with you fantasies? Maybe they're fapping those to the idea of fun. their notion of hell, and they're like, I don't really want to go there. <laughs> yeah, like, all those fantasies are fun in the mind. I don't want any of those to come true. Like, the scariest thing Shabam has ever said to me is, I'd like to make all your fantasies come true. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. There are a few of these. I don't Look, want them to come true. They're yeah. really fun when I can control everything yeah. in my mind. Outside a lot of, of people that, have terrifying. rape fantasies. If they're actually raped, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. They're yeah, not a real rape. They're not actually in control. They were in control in the fantasy. The rapist was super hot and did exactly what they wanted to do, even though they were yep. fighting and running away or whatever. It was a fantasy, and, as soon, and, and a lot of people act no out rape pain. fantasies with, with a lot of controls in place. Right. They get someone that they really trust. And this is a lot of BDSM, I think, comes from this. That people have rape fantasies or something rape-like that they fantasize about. And they find a safe way to act it out. But it has to be very safe or they're not enjoying it anymore. Yeah, it, I don't trust yeah. that one to ever be safe. Yeah. Oh, you don't? <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. staying in my head. So, yeah. Uh, maybe that's it. <laughs> I would hope so because I can't imagine that would actually be real and fun. Yeah. And so, I think a lot of people screw themselves by trying to make all their fantasies become just gonna, real. It's like, no, don't. I'm just going to touch on this briefly because we have a lot. Uh, there's some stuff I really want to get to. And, and, uh, but an honor killing came up again. I was watching Daniel Radcliffe play Allen Ginsberg, the poet. And he was, I think, bisexual, but he definitely had gay relations and things. And 
an honor killing is a homicide of a member of a family or social group by other members due to the perpetrator's belief that the victim has brought shame or dishonor upon the family or community. And at the period of time this movie happened, or this event happened that the movie was based on, someone was, an honor killing was specifically meant, uh, or one of the one of the examples of an honor killing that was actually written up in the law books was if someone like came on to you, if the person was homosexual and came on to you, then the killing would be called oh. an honor killing, and that would be considered a justified homicide. And Makes so sense. that was the defense that some people would put forth is that, oh, he came That's on to me. That's kind of twisted. Not rape, by the way. No, you're not defending yourself from a rape. Just that they, that they dared to, the homosexuality was such a horrible thing that just, just flirting with someone, just propositioning them was enough to justify a homicide. That's pretty horrifying. <laughs> yeah. So that was a quick education, a uh, history lesson for you. We, it, things have gotten so much better right now for LGBT folks that it's easy to forget how, just the, how bad just recent history was. I mean, say, we talked you guys about have made a lot of progress. Like it took women and blacks a lot longer to get anywhere near this. Yeah. I think each movement goes a little faster, faster than the last. Right. I think trans folk have the next big hurdle to get past. And I think it's going to go even faster than gay stuff. Yeah. I, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm hoping so. What do you think, Lauren? I think it's, yeah, it's already gotten to that point. Yeah. Um, but I think another component of that is not just, is not the same sort of struggle that Alan was describing in terms of losing one's culture. I think the, the whole process of being trans is a sort of a loss of culture or, or becoming something different or just trying to fit in. And, and I think it's, yeah, so there's, the, it's about. Well, that, the candle will be burnt from both ends, I think, because on the one hand, we'll accept people transitioning. And on the other hand, we'll be less obsessed with gender in the first place. Right. right. I, I would like to see that's part of genderism. Right. And, and trying to end genderism. That's yeah. the word I'm using now instead of being pro feminism is is part of that is is it's just not not putting ex particular expectations on people for their gender uh, and, and acknowledging that people are not that gender isn't so strictly binary. Right. But a lot I, of people I feel like there the, are interse intersex people physically, biologically who are intersex. The, the gender nonconforming movement has already moved so far into that idea of white culture that we were talking about earlier, though. Yeah. Like, that's the goal for most people. Most of the trans women I know, they want to just be mm. married and nobody notice them. Yeah. Well, it's kind of right up there with the whole, a lot of the feminist idea was to basically just be men. I'm like, you're not really advancing yourself if your yeah, whole that's, goal that's is to become masculine, yes. traditionally masculine. Can you not do that? I like my traditional feminine power. Thank you. Can I please have it? Mm -hmm. So this is Angel, a dog named Angel. Well, that's and she got trapped phrase. in a barn. She was chained up and Aww. got severely burned. If you're watching the video, you can see some of this. I'll show pictures of what this dog looks like. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to talk about, is it really is it really animal kind to this animal not to put it to sleep? I, I, I think it's kind of ridiculous. This is your host, Dale, on Flaming Freedom. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Good morning, folks, and welcome back to Flaming Freedom. Lauren, are you all right? Don't you have to get going? No, I love Flaming Freedom. I'm going to stick around. All right. That's awesome. We'd love to have you. Totally worth it. Um, so, you, and, and you might have a beef with me. So I, I never have beef with you. This discussion might get here. We always agree. Right. So, I'll, let me show some pictures again. Um, this is the, and, I, and of course, it's not coming up. Thanks a lot. Freaking desktop weirdness. Um, where's the thing? Oh, your poor computer. No, it's not working. Just beat somebody. Right, you're not going to get to see the picture. You just have to trust me on this. The dog has <laughs> burns on 75%, third degree burns on 75% of its body. Oh. I think it's blind, blind in at least one eye. That, that's not that big a deal. I mean, a lot of blind animals get by fine. But, um, uh, but, um, it, the, humans are put into, humans are put into comas for this kind of pain. Right? It's, it's, that's how bad burns, uh, if you get burned severely enough, a human will be put in, in, in induced into a coma because the pain yeah. is so unbearable. They give you medications to keep you in a coma for at least a week, I think. This, do this dog needs extensive surgery and skin grafts and things to survive. And I'm just, th and they're doing, th they're trying to raise money for it and all this stuff. I have no problem raising money for a dog's medical treatments and things like that. I, uh, that, that, I, but the question here is like, sh sh I think they should put this animal to sleep. Was the dog abused? I don't know all that. It didn't. Yeah. It, it, he was chained in a barn, and the barn caught on fire. And uh, I think they're looking for 
someone to to take him in or something like that also mm-hmm. but uh but he's going to need massive surgery and they're trying to raise money for that and stuff and i'm like this is a weird sort of reaction i think people have um i don't think it's i don't think it's kind to keep an animal alive that's in that much pain and suffering do we know how old the dog is no i don't know okay and i don't have time to watch the video right now yeah. but uh it, I, it you know i don't think it matters though at that but that much damage if, if someone's you know i i think a person at 75 at least you can ask the person though like you can always ask the person what do you feel if there's, like, I'm, there's I'm, also i'm for pe- letting people die if they want to die there's some feedback that you can get from the dog, though. I mean, if they're howling and shrieking, and if you can, you can tell. You can look in their yeah. eyes and tell. And sometimes, I, and I, sometimes, yeah. And I think that people should try to make that effort. Absolutely. I don't think that they should just kill things because they're no, like, oh, of course I think not. This, That's uh, I saw this dog limping today, so I shot it. <laughs> like, no, there's there's idiots <laughs> oh, that yeah. say that. Yeah, and you missed the like, part. No, 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 no. You missed no, the you, part during when I was talking with Lelani during the break, and you stepped away for a moment. I said, that, yeah, don't kill the dog because it's got a limp. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is a dog with 75% of his body in third-degree burns and needs yeah. massive skin grafts uh, to survive. Might still not survive uh, after all that painful surgery and, and recovery and all this stuff. It's, uh, if I was the dog, I, I would personally want to survive. All right. But that's just me. All right. Well, so, I think uh, a lot of it depends on what kind of life the dog has had. If the dog has lived a good life and, say, they're, it's 10 years old, I would probably let it go. Um, it, Why is it really that each? Rel- I mean, are you saying that if it ha- if it was young, you would, you wouldn't? Or you yeah, would? because animals heal. Animals and people actually heal better when they're younger. They're they're able to bounce back from traumatic injuries far easier when so it's they're it's, in the so first a, half of their life. It's a biological argument then. Part of it is biological. Okay. Yes. Hmm. And do um, you feel like part of it is like you've had a full life or something at all? Well, yeah. I mean, if you've had a good life and you have a lot of good memories, you know, then the animal knows, okay, this wasn't a punishment. You know, I've, I've had people love me. You know, I've had a good time in and my animal life. No, they're dying anyway. They just think they're falling asleep. But think, they do, do understand you know that. I think that's they how people, think. that's probably what happens to most people. Like, well, oh, I'm animals, getting really tired. I, they lay down and then they don't wake up. They absolutely no, understand I, death. Absolutely, they know. Yeah, and, oh, this oh, is they never fear it. Be- yeah, I understand that, but I don't. Think, I don't that. think they know when they're being put to sleep that they're dying. No, but the other animals know that they're dead. Yeah, that, that they may understand be. that. that may oh be. no, that's absolutely hundred yeah. percent. I could. Teddy, no, I, 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 Teddy, Teddy, Teddy knows that Blitzer's not there anymore. Right, because right. he. Yeah, that that's our yeah, dog was. Oh, this is your um, dog. Right, uh, we he misses put him Blitzer, down. I'm sure. Who are these people? In August, he was 15. He was a husky collie mix. He had. Ar- bad arthritis in both knees and both back hip joints. And we did as much as we could to make him comfortable for that summer. And, you know, he couldn't go for walks anymore. He couldn't move very well. He couldn't lift his leg to pee. And we said it was time to, it was time because yeah. the next thing he's going to get well, this is, is like depressing. horrible Let's cancer. move on to something cheerful. But Teddy understood when we put Blitzer down, we had Teddy come out and see him after he was gone and this is the dog who used to whimper and whine and bark and panic if Blitzer wasn't there. And he was totally cool after that. Uh, he didn't look for him ever again. So, you, yeah, you give him a chance to see he's actually yeah. He's yeah. dead. Yeah. So this, that's depressing. So let's talk about something more cheerful. <laughs> is it still cannibalism if you only eat vegans? What do you, how do you feel about this, This isn't cheery. This is sick. <laughs> you're a sick, sick man. Cannibalism here's, here's the is thing. based on the race you're eating, not what right. you're... Right, not right. what your food is eating. Here's my thought. Here's my that was my teaser title. Here's my thought. <laughs> Vegans are always putting out as if we're no better than the animals. Huh. Now no. I have no problem eating animals. I, I have no problem eating animals. Animals I am a species. have no problem eating animals. <laughs> right. That's important to note. Uh, I am a speciesist. I think humans are the only ones that think about all the that, that think about other creatures on this planet than themselves. Other animals. Well, I, I there's rare exceptions, that. but generally animals are they. They're they're just surviving, and and the balance of nature is from every animal trying to survive at what, whatever cost it takes for their species to survive. Uh, the balance of nature happens like that. It's only humans who are thinking about oh, what, how are we impacting the planet? How are we impacting these other creatures? And I'm glad we do that. Yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. Um, but I do make a distinction between us and other animals in the same way that every other creature on this planet does. Uh, I, I am a speciesist in that sense, and so I, I, I joke about like, well, if vegans are not. If they say, well, we're no different than animals, and it's murder if you kill an animal, which that is ridiculous. That makes no logical or rational sense. I'm like, right. you just placed you, yourself on the same fallacy. level as animals that I'm okay with eating. So I, <laughs> I'm not a vegan myself, but I, I've had a lot of vegan friends, and I, I've often thought to myself, 
you know, that, this actually ties in very well with the dog conversation. Okay. The dog can't speak for itself and animals can't speak for themselves. All right. Yeah. I think cannibalism is a great idea because <laughs> the person can say, yep, it's time. I'm, I'm ready to be yeah. eaten now. I don't want my body to go to waste. Right. And if, if they say, hey, come <laughs> Some on, guys, cultures have dig that. in. Some they, cultures, it's standard. That I mean, no, I, yeah. they, it's not until after you die naturally. I think that works very well. But, but a lot of cultures feel like, well, that's how they, the, the, there's they it's symbolic it of, of, yeah, that person staying with them. Yep. <laughs> it's creepy. I, I admit it's creepy. I don't like it. It's very un, un, t- distasteful to me no, and gross. I think that, I but think their it's culture, beautiful. it's just part of their, it's part of the rituals they have to yeah. let there's go of someone. There's a certain beauty and symmetry to it, I think. So, yeah. and, and, and there's, there's no moral issue here. It's, gr- it's a little gross. What about guys that swallow, Dale? But it's... <laughs> is that cannibalism? I don't know. I but did I ask mean, a like, guy... Is that creepy? You don't find that creepy. I mean, I find yeah. it creepy. Well, I... I, I, I find I swallowing date, in general creepy. I went out with a, a Jewish guy once. I've dated, actually, I've dated several <laughs> Jewish guys. But this one in particular, I remember asking him, uh, do, I have, do I need to get my penis blessed by a rabbi before you can go down on me? Because of your e- you eating rules. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no, sure I wasn't. It was a joke, but it's a valid question, right? You're not supposed to be eating anything that's not kosher. Oh, well, I get what it. If they is semen, semen has to be kosher. Yeah. Come is on, kosher? that's that's a patriarchal society. They're going to make sure semen's considered kosher, so that their wives <laughs> can give them. Can yeah, that's okay. kosher. It's got to be. All right. Here Let's goes patriarchy here. again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, yeah. I, I acknowledge the, I acknowledge patriarchy, but. So we're pro cannibalism. Is that? Fail to acknowledge conclusion? gynocentrism. <laughs> what, are, what are you saying? Gynocentrism. Yeah, I mean, I think gynocentrism is actually okay in some places, like my bedroom. <laughs> yep. Right. <laughs> yeah. Come on in. I'm just saying the Speaking of the hand. eating or oh, getting yeah. raped. There you go. Wait, oh, right. No, you no, would no, rather get raped or get eaten? Oh. And, and our comment was, we'd like to get eaten out, then fucked, please. Uh, Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, she, I'm so glad you're <laughs> without here. Without the rape. Without the rape. It can be... Uh, we can role play. <laughs> right. I'm open to that. We're, we already talked about all that. <laughs> I can say no, no, please, no. I mean, my body will say yes, but I'll say no. <laughs> okay. I have no boundaries. I'm going to totally have to do a video now of, is it cannibalism to eat if you only eat vegans? You would think uh, that um, I did some other vegan videos, and I'm surprised I didn't get even more. Like I did a uh, petarded, petarded Pokemon propaganda. Yeah, my only problem. Peta arted, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. Oh yeah. darn! There's the music. Oh no! My only problem Spit with veganisms out. are the evangelical ones who think everybody should be vegan because they are. What other kind is there? Oh, vegetarians. No, I, I know vegetarians that aren't militant, but I don't know any vegans that aren't. <laughs> It's so moral. Veganism is so moral. Vegetarianism so might be dietary. Absolutely no we'll be sense. back in a moment. This is Flaming Free. Good morning. This is the last segment of Flaming Freedom. There's still time for you to call in if you'd like. If you hurry, the uh, Skype account is In Your Head Shows. Uh, and while we're at it, I want to let anyone know, go to flamingfreedom.com to find out more about us. One thing I keep forgetting to announce is that our RSS feed... Has been. We've got a working RSS feed now. We've had problems for so long. Neil never fixed the problem. I'm going to blame Neil since he's not here to defend himself. He never fixed the damn problems with the RSS feed. It's a little bit tedious. Unfortunately, we're not coming up automatically if you just try to search for us on your phone. So you will have to put the URL in. Oh. But if you just go to flamingfreedom.com and click on RSS, there's a link right at the top of the page. That is a working RSS feed now. It stays updated. It updates like within moments of me posting a new show. And that is just that is just podcast. So it'll just be the downloadable audio. Um, that's what that RSS feed is. I might make feeds for other things. I can do that. Like but in the meantime, that's what most people want is to be able to listen to us on their phone or something. Yeah. yeah. So you do have to enter the URL in, but it is working now. It, it is actually up to date. So those of you who would like to listen to us in your car and your, from your phone, um, just download automatically with your favorite podcasting software or whatever you can now do that you just have to enter the url in cool oh, yeah. so also go to facebook.com slash flaming freedom there's a link there to the live event invite your friends to that it's public um invite your friends i don't know why people aren't doing that i think there might be a bug this keeps people from doing it but no one's told me that yet but i don't know that's we'll possible see. or facebook just hates you i think facebook hates me i, I do talk bad about them so I'm, facebook hates be surprised. everybody and you can also find us on google plus and diaspora so, I'm starting to give up on diaspora, though. I hate to say that. I wanted it to succeed, but it might just give still, it time. Eh. 
It's getting, well, it's going to take more than a month. We'll you just see. have to wait for it to hit. You have to wait for for oh, Facebook been a lot to more really implode. It's a lot more oh, than a month. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's been more than that already. Anyway, uh, vegans, you were saying that there's some non-militant vegans. I'm not sure about that. I, I think at the very least, they're looking down their nose at you. Oh, in, in their head, you, yes. Because they're, they're, they think it's immoral to eat animals. They think you're murdering animals. You can't, you're not murdering animals. It might be cruel. Well, I mean, animals are Sometimes. cruel to each other. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched some of those, uh, yeah. what are they called, nature shows, where you see a lion run down an antelope. That antelope is alive, and like four lions are numbing on it. I see them pull a fetus out of a, uh, and the fetus is still kicking while they're eating the mom. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that, the way rights work um, is you evil. have to acknowledge other people's rights for yours to be respected. We were talking about rights and responsibilities earlier. Yes. Responsibilities come with the very minimum, r- some responsibility, you have the responsibility to respect other people's rights for yours to be respected. And this is why, for instance, if someone tries to kill you, it is not murder if you kill them first. Right. You, You're defending you kill yourself. Them right back. <laughs> You're defending yourself. If they're helpless, then you don't have an excuse anymore. Yeah. If you've disabled them and they can't harm you anymore, then at that point is murder. But if you're if you're if it's you or them, I'm gonna, they're going to go first. Yeah. And if if I'm hungry, that pig is going. Yeah. And there will... are humane ways to take down an animal <laughs> yeah. to where they don't suffer, and you're not eating them while they're kicking like yeah. the other animals do to each other. So I, you know I, what, vegans kiss my butt. I'm not a fan of factory farms, but the number of people no. in the world, I I understand why they exist. And, uh, and again, some debates about, how and again, I care effective. less about the chicken being stuck in that factory farm than I do about eating. Well, I don't like chicken. Actually, you can get rid of the, you can let I them like go, chicken. let the chickens out, but keep the cows at least and pigs, keep them in the factory farm so I can have bacon in the morning and stuff. Yeah. But free range <laughs> bacon tastes so much better. It, I'm going to try to get that. The, I, oh, I, I realize that not amazing. everyone is going to be able to eat like that. Though. Amazing. We, we can't sustain the world on, on all the grass fed stuff. There unfortunately. are arguments and that it's healthier. we absolutely can. Significantly healthy. Yeah, I no, haven't heard can. one that convinced me, but, but actually, can, um, there was a Ted talk. Lead me to an article about it. Or something. There's a Ted talk where the guy talks about how you, they're reclaiming the desert in Africa through grazing. Because of the way the animals go through and they graze and they leave their poop, they're enriching the soil as they go through. They only mow it down. They don't destroy it. So it actually makes the root the system and stronger. Okay. And it yeah. actually holds the soil in. And they've revitalized whole parts of Africa through uh, grazing maybe. I, I, maybe they'll convince me. If you link me to something, it's I'll see. It's actually I'm, good for the world, for I'm the planet, skeptical. folks. I'm skeptical. It's the big farms that are bad. No, I, I don't. That I wouldn't argue with. Yeah. I would just say the sheer number of people in the world that, you know. I'd we, rather have factory farms than do without my meat. Well, we didn't have, we had meat and we had, I the only reason we went to factory farms was because of government subsidies. Again, our government getting yeah. involved screws everything up. I think some vegetarians are vegetarian for health reasons. Like they've been convinced that being vegetarian might be healthy, but usually if they're vegan. I disagree with them, but you know, whatever. Vegan is pushing it though. Like trying to get the nutrition you need as a vegan is, is a struggle. I don't, I'm not saying it's impossible, yeah. but damn, it's a you, gotta, you better eat well. <laughs> I don't, honestly, I'm going to say something. I've never seen a healthy looking vegan. Uh, Not once. Yeah. They all look a little sickly. I'm sorry, we're omnivores. Biologically well, speaking, our bodies need protein. We cannot make what we need from grass, folks. I go to health food stores and stuff, and I see uh, people who, they seem like very, very lively and healthy older people. And I'm like, wow, maybe vegetarianism is keeping these people vigor, giving them a lot of vigor in their old age. And then I find out. Like, no, they're not that old. They just look old. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going right back to my steak. Oh my God. That's because they're, well, they're, they're, they've been convinced like a high carbohydrate, low fat diet is good for them. And they're starving a lot of the cells of their body yeah. that are made of fat and, we and cholesterol. The Vitamin cell walls of your body are made of cholesterol. Your brain is almost completely made of cholesterol. And people say cholesterol is a bad thing. No, it's a nutrient. It, you fat, need it. Yeah, fat-soluble <laughs> vitamins are absolutely like vitamin D. I'm sorry, folks, yeah. if you're drinking skim milk, you ain't getting it. Yeah. Which means you're not absorbing calcium. Yeah. So why bother drinking the skim milk? And, and diabetes. 25% of the population is diabetic or pre-diabetic. Why? Because they've been convinced to go low fat, high carb. Yeah. I have found out, right, those snap peas, I love those things, right? They're baked. <laughs> There's hardly any fat in them. They spike my blood sugar. Oh. Potato chips don't. Like kettle cooked potato chips with all the f- fried, they don't spike my blood sugar. Ice Crazy. cream doesn't spike my blood sugar. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Does not spike my blood sugar. Lucky. What the hell? But those snap peas, that they seem so healthy. They're baked. They're good. I like them. Oh, those things are. But awesome. they spiked me. They spiked my blood sugar. I test it. I have to test myself. I don't yeah, trust. You... No, I don't trust anything because everything's different. Everybody reacts differently. But that's for me, and I'm not saying for other diabetics. For me, I can have ice cream, but I can't have snap peas. 
<laughs> for breakfast, I yeah. had banana peanut butter wrap, and it was awesome. Oh. Um. Like well, the snap peas are like 17 grams of serving, and in yeah. and, and, and the no whole bag, protein, you could eat the whole no bag, fiber. like it's nothing. It's three and a half servings in the whole bag, so I eat like half a bag, so I eat like 35 grams of carbs, but it was baked with very little fat, and it spiked me. Yeah, no but fat, no protein, potato chips, no fiber. I can eat a whole bowl of potato chips, no problem. Yeah. Denmark changes their sex change laws. There's not a whole Sorry. lot to talk about here, other than it's really good news, and I'm glad about it. Uh... It's 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 good. Or did you say you're sorry? Or yeah, I was I was like jiggling over here, and I realized everything's jiggling. Oh, that's what you're apologizing sorry. for. That's okay. So um, they Drive changed from nuts. They changed their sex change laws. Uh, I think Sweden did this first because this was a big controversy in Sweden. I saw protests online and things like that. Danish Parliament has scrapped a law requiring people to be sterilized as part of their sex change procedure before you could legally be changed, like before your driver's license and passport and so forth, would be changed. You had to be sterilized. And that's... that's what was their justification for that? Were they worried <sighs> that it's somehow contagious? <laughs> I wonder about that. I wonder about that. Like, oh my gosh, you're trans. You're totally going to pass on your trans yeah, genes. We're afraid your kids will be trans. Like, um, you realize that the human race is horribly flawed. It's, it's We're gen- passed on all kinds of crap. Yeah, and gender is so murky as it is. There's so many intersex conditions. It's a lot more fluid. than people realize. A lot of people are born intersex in some way because hormones happen in the womb that turn you one way or the other. You know, usually that's triggered by chromosomes, but then there are also people whose body doesn't, re- doesn't respond. There's people who yeah. are androgen insensitive, for instance, who are genetically male, but absolutely female in every way because their body's completely immune or, or to a large degree immune to whatever extent. The androgen that's the, the testosterone that's in their system isn't working. Yeah. It's not affecting them enough for them to actually become male in the womb. So they actually are born with a vagina and they get breasts when they when they go through puberty, all that stuff. They usually have less body hair than most women. I was going to say, I'd be really interested <laughs> to know what their sex drives are like. Yeah. I think that they're, uh, I, yeah, I think they tend to have a low sex drive, actually. Yeah, I would imagine, because testosterone, testosterone is linked to that. Right. Because in yeah. some ethnicities, I'm not going to say mm-hmm. race, because that's crap. In some ethnicities, the testosterone is actually higher, like Italian women, um, a lot of Latino women, and black women have higher testosterone mm. than... Interesting. Like me. Okay. A lot of Latino men, I think, do too, because well, yeah, you that's can, why they're so good in the sack. Well, Hot that's damn. why a lot of Italian women. Oh, and stuff I'm so have racist that. toward Latinos, man. Yeah, I haven't had a, I haven't had bad sex with a Latino yet. Oh my god, it's amazing. I'm sorry like for Asian my racism. Dudes. I apologize in advance for my racism, but uh, I don't like Asian anything. Asians are nice too. I, had, I, like I date Asian a lot of Asians. Way. I, don't, I mean, I don't care. I don't look. At, I honestly don't look at race generally, except with Latinos. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Latino, you got brownie points right off the start. <laughs> oh, I definitely uh, see it. But uh, I usually I don't pay don't, attention to it. Yeah, to I'm it. more culturally driven. Yeah. I won't do culturally. Wow, do we, how do we end up on that? Anyway, I don't know. Um, yeah, don't do that. Denmark, good, congrats to Denmark. They're, they've come to their senses. They're not asking people to be sterilized. I was saying, if Yay. you're like a trans woman, you might want to freeze your sperm and have Yeah, we have were just baby saying, later, what if, what if with you're a, a mom or with a, a female partner or whatever? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thanks for joining us, Lilania. Yeah, thank you for having me. Tune in, everyone, next week from uh, 10 a.m. until noon Eastern Time on the Liberty Radio Network. See you then.